Identify two personality prototypes, the extrovert and the introvert. The introvert bases his life entirely on the internal meanings he alone describes, while the extrovert's frame of reference belongs entirely to the world outside himself. Jung might be surprised to find his analytical model of personalities applied to the contemporary discourse on architecture. Let's identify the current internationalist paradigm as a global extrovert and the insular centuries in the making traditions of Japan as the indigenous introvert. So Jung's archetypal personality conflict could be imagined not as an exchange within a single individual, but as an intersection of two cultures. The architecture of Shigeru Ban, I think, belongs particularly to this tension between competing cultural prospects. Predictably, the exporting cultural extrovert subsumes the sometimes fragile antecedents that belong to the local introvert. But Shigeru Ban has a more resilient cultural history. Admiral Perry, the prototype Western extrovert, sailed into Tokyo Bay in the middle of the 19th century and precipitated a cultural schism that endures today. Can contemporary Japan promulgate what is uniquely and quintessentially Japanese or should Japan remodel itself in accord with a Western dictionary definition of national priorities? For Shigeru Bon, neither option entirely solves the architect's problem. The Swiss Frenchman, Le Corbusier, a well-known extrovert, built a museum on a hill in Ueno Park looking over Tokyo. Mayakawa and Sakakura absorbed the French modernist precedent and passed that conceptual pro forma to Tange, Kurosawa, and Kikutake, who in turn handed it to Maki and Isusake and on to Ito and Ando. Quite an astonishing lineage. Shigeru Ban observed all this, but refused to swear allegiance to the modernist ideogram. Bon is not the latest link in the Ueno Park lineage. His work suggests a more intricate and contradictory sensibility, one that might belong to the remarkable 7th century Taoist Issei Shrine. At Issei, a building is constructed on one of two adjacent sites and stands for 20 years. The contiguous site remains empty. After 20 years, the building is demolished and an identical structure is built on the adjacent site. And it, in turn, stands for 20 years and so on and so on. So the current structure at Issei is always both old and new, forever built, forever unbuilt, forever building assembling and disassembling, enduring and ephemeral, temporary and permanent, specific and generic, tangible and abstract. Shigeru Bon is his own psychologist. As at Issei, Bon shape, Bon space, Bon material, Bon detail transform that dated extrovert into introvert dialectic and make Bonn architecture a synthesis, neither the international nor the indigenous allegiance, but a transcendent poetic voice, which simultaneously invokes both Jung's prototypes and belongs to neither. Please welcome psychologist Shigeru Bonn to Syrac.
very much. Um, I'm terribly sorry I had to postpone my last lecture because I had terrible back because I'm having really hard time in, in France working with French people. Uh, <laughs> um, I'm so glad I came back to, to SAYAC after uh, 28 years. I was here, not here, actually, in Berkeley Street in Santa Monica. It's the first period of SAYAC. It was 1978. I spent here two and a half years before I uh, transferred to Cooper Union. But the, the, the SAYAC was really the, the beginning of my whole entire career because I just finished high school in Japan and I came here to start studying architecture. So that the, the, uh, the, my education, my, my architecture has a big influence from the education of SAYAC, including the, 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 the Ray, uh, Ray Capiz architecture. I was still remember I visited his house and uh, I have a strong inf architecture influence and also that the many uh, strong influence from the so-called case study houses. All my Japanese influence is di indirectly through the, the so-called so case study houses in California. Um, today I'm showing uh, my project from very beginning to the most recent one, which is the, uh, the new Pompidou Center, including the, some of disaster relief project. Um, I'm working in some disaster relief, uh, that, uh, disaster area. As you know, the history of architecture, architect has been working for privileged people. We used to work for the, the religious group, king, and even now we are working for previous, pre, privileged people, like a government, uh, big corporation, rich people. And uh, however, uh, at the end of 18th century, uh, when the Industrial Revolution started, the, the many people moved into the city, we had to build the social housing. That was the first time architect ever worked for general public. After Cold War finished in the 1980s, there are so many disasters happening all over the world, natural disaster, man-made disaster. I must say, natural disaster are no longer natural. I must say those are man-made disaster. For example, earthquake. Nobody are killed by earthquake itself. People are killed by collapse of the building. Even flooding. Flooding is becoming bigger and more often because of deforestations. We cut the trees for construction. Then I must say these, those disasters, earthquake and flooding, are uh, really uh, responsible for architect because of people are killed by collapse of the building and we cut trees for the construction. So we got to do something after disaster. And that's why I started do, uh, the working in disaster area. Uh, this is uh, the, the exhibition. I, I after I finished Cooper Union in uh, 1985, I went back to Tokyo immediately to, to start my own uh, practice. And I started designing exhibition. This is uh, one of the earliest exhibition I designed for my favorite architect, Alba Alto. Uh, because I went to Finland many times to see his architecture, and I wanted to design something like Alba Alto's uh, architecture for his exhibition. But I couldn't afford using timber, wood, as his, he, he, he did. So I was looking for some alternative material to replace wood. Then I found out paper chip, because paper chip was all over my studio after I finished tracing paper, fax paper, or toilet paper. Always <laughs> it's remained, and I hate to throw them away. So I, decide, I, I knew that it's very inexpensive because made of recycled paper, and I knew it's, we can make any diameter, any length. Here, I used the inch diameter tubes for the ceiling, like Alberto's B Please Library, and di bigger diameter was used for the freestanding partition. That's the first time I ever used paper for the interior. Since then, I knew it's such a strong material. I started testing it to find out the, 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 uh, the, the, the compression, tension, tensile strengths uh, to use for the building structural material. Next, please. This is uh, also the area houses I designed. It's called pay, uh, wall, uh, furniture house. It's a prefabricating house system. When I experienced terrible earthquake, many people were killed by uh, uh, heavy furniture. Furniture fall down on the people, they killed. 
Even some people save their life because they are in between heavy furniture, and when roof fall down on the people, they save their life because of this heavy furniture. So I knew furniture is strong enough uh, to save people or even to keep to kill people. So I, I thought, why don't you design the house itself just by furniture? So this is the uh, the, the the prototype. Uh, this is a standard type of the furniture. It's a closet. It's three feet by uh, uh, eight feet, and it's already insulation is in, and it's painted outside inside. Next, please. And then furniture just. Oh. These are where. That's it. So we bring in the furnitures. It's uh, it's quite right weight. Then we just connect the furniture with the foundation and also horizontal furniture and furniture. Next, please. In one day, all the structure cabinet are installed, and it's already painted inside outside. Next day, we just put the pre-cut beams to to put the prat at the roof. If you want to make a, a second floor, you just have to repeat putting the furniture on top of this platform so that we can build without any skilled labor. Uh, so we can save time and labor to build this furniture house. Next, please. So even this uh, the uh, bookstore, uh, bookshelves, it's also the structure, structure uh, element uh, to, for, the, for the vertical and also lateral force. Next, please. When I was uh, asked to design the, the house near the Great Wall in China, I wanted to use some local material, and I found out timber is very expensive in China, but uh, they make the, the plywood made of uh, bamboo skin. So then I work with local, comp local uh, uh, plywood company to make a laminated bamboo, and I brought back to Tokyo to test it, and it was so strong, it was something in between wood and the, the steel. This, this is the type of the furniture house because it's very difficult to do the good site administration. It's so far away. That's why I decided to use furniture house idea because the, it's easy to, to, to uh, control the quality. Next, please. So this is all made of furniture, made of the, 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 the laminated bamboo for the framing and columns and the, even the beams, everything made in bamboo. And this is typical center courtyard type of the, the house. Next, please. Then uh, the, this idea of using stor storage unit, uh, using storage unit as a structure, uh, goes to this uh, project. Uh, it's called Nomadic Museum. Uh, this was built in New York uh, last March for three months, temporary. And this time I use a shipping container as a structure uh, for the bearing wall. This exhibition is, uh, 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 this is a, a, the museum for the uh, photographer, Gregory Cobert. And it's interesting, he, he asked me to design the temporary uh, the museum, which traveled all over the world. The first place was on top of the pier, 54 in New York. And uh, so the three, the four layer of the container, which create checkerboard pattern, uh, became the bearing wall. I made it checkerboard pattern in order to uh, the, the minimize number of container, uh, also minimize the weight of the, the structure because this is sitting on the, the 100 years old wooden, uh, wooden pier. Next, please. And uh, uh, the roof is supported by paper chip comb and the paper chip triangle. Next, please. This is inside. Uh, as th that's uh, just like a furniture structure. This con uh, the, uh, container is used as a bearing wall. And now this museum is coming to, to Santa Monica from uh, next January. And now it's under construction. I'm working with the, the, the local uh, uh, farm, Gensler. And it's coming very well. And so please come over to, to Santa Monica Pier uh, next January. Next, please. Uh, this is uh, one of the latest projects in France. I spent six years to, for this small project. Uh, this is uh, the, the small museum for the uh, history of the canal. This is the canal. It's a very old canal. 
And this is the, the structure to exhibit old boat. It's a paper tube structure. And uh, also this is a small uh, museum in, uh, introducing the history of the canal. Next, please. Uh, this is the first permanent uh, paper tube architecture in Europe after the, the temporary uh, pavilion for Hanover Expo. And uh, this is, uh, I have to show you detail. Next, please. This is an interesting uh, uh, die, uh, aluminum, uh, aluminum die cast joint. Because this was first uh, paper tube stru permanent structure in France, I was asked by proof engineer to design the joint in order to, to replace uh, paper tube in case if, if it's damaged. In order to change, this when uh, we have to change, but it's actually the paper tube lasts uh, almost forever. But uh, the, the, we have to unscrew this uh, unscrew. Then the, this wood piece goes inside of the tube to take this paper tube out. Then we put a new tube, and this uh, the, this uh, wooden piece goes back, and the, uh, we screw to to connect it. So this is very simple joint uh, in order to replace the the, the the tubes just in case it's damaged. Next, please. And uh, I want to show you as a continuous development of the furniture structure. And this one, I have very small budget, so I ask uh, the, the client uh, to design the exhibition itself to use the exhibition as a part of a structure. Next, please. I just use the L-shaped angle with hole. This is kind of the, the, the storage, uh, self-built storage unit. You can buy do-it-yourself store to make your own bookshelf with L-shaped angle. We just, I just designed the exhibition itself with this uh, L shape angle, and uh, now and also this exhibition itself is uh, holding the roof, so exhibition becomes the part of the structure, and also there's a low voltage uh, uh, is here, so that I can creep in the uh, light uh, fixture to this structure itself. So these are three meaning: it's uh, the exhibition and the structure, and also the lighting fixture itself. Next, please. Uh, right hand side is my very old house called Cotton Wall House, built 1984. Uh, left hand side is one of my favorite houses designed by Miss Van der Rohe, Franz Wall's house. This Franz Wall's house is a revolutionary house in uh, Western history of architecture because architecture totally became transparent. But I must say, this is a phys uh, visually transparent, but not uh, physically. If you take a look at traditional Japanese house, when we open up all the sliding doors, the house becomes totally transparent, visually, even physically, because inside and outside connected. Uh, uh, connected. But as you know, that there is only one door connected with the outside, so that it's visually transparent, but physically it's not really uh, as transparent as Japanese architecture. So that is a uh, mis uh, uh, innovation. When I was I met built my client house, they are living in the same site with in a traditional small Japanese house, enjoying openness and flexibility of the house. So I decided to carry on their lifestyle into the new structure. It's just simply steel structure uh, with the the glass sliding door to divide inside with the terrace, and the 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 final skin is made of curtain. Next, please. So in order to the curtain is used as the, uh, the shading device, also that, that is keep privacy. And when the curtain is blown away, I can expand the, the, the limit of the site to the street. And uh, as you know, Miss Van der Rohe is the architect who invented so-called curtain wall. Curtain wall is the glass and the metal window. Instead of using a Miss Young uh, curtain wall, I just use a curtain as a curtain wall house. <laughs> Next, please. This is a house called Two Fifths House. The, the name came from geometry because the, the two, two of five uh, rectangular space are only used as indoor space. This is the front courtyard outside, it's the living room inside, the middle courtyard outside, and the indoor again, and the outdoor again. Wherever there's a dot line, these are glass sliding door, which goes outside of the wall to open from wall to wall in order to connect inside and outside. Next, please. This left-hand side photo uh, is taken from the front courtyard to see through to the back courtyard. So the, all the floor are connected. 
uh, I call this universal space instead of universal uh, universal floor instead of universal space. All the floor is connected, and we can divide the, 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 the rooms depending on the time of uh, depending on occasion and the season. I put the, the uh, second floor like just like a Mission glass house in order to compare Jap uh, the Mission transparency and also the Japanese type of transparency underneath. Next, please. This is a house called Picture Window House. Uh, this was built on the hill uh, looking at the, the, the ocean view. Um, I want to make uh, the picture window by the, the structure of the building itself. Usually picture window is small square window on the wall to frame beautiful uh, landscape as, a, as like uh, the, the, the painting. Instead of making square window, I just made the whole second floor as the frame to cut the, the ocean view. Next, please. So this is a horizontal window uh, as a picture window to cut the, the ocean, beautiful ocean view. Next, please. Right hand side, it's a house I call a uh, wallless house, house without wall built on the hill. This is just a small weekend house. And the left hand side is my another favorite of Miss Van der uh, the uh, Barcelona Pavilion. After this Barcelona Pavilion was rebuilt, I've been there a couple of times. It's really amazing architecture. But it's quite ambiguous structurally because the always columns are standing so close to the wall. Then I wonder whether this column is really structural or not, because this wall could be structure. Then I calculated uh, the, the, the structure just with columns, without any walls. Then I, I knew there's enough columns to support the, 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 the roof. But also I calculated just walls without any columns, and also there's enough walls uh, area to support the, the, the roof. So the meaning of the column and the wall is quite ambiguous here. My wall itself, I tried to uh, uh, clarify or uh, to simplify the meaning of each fundamental architecture element, like a columns, wall, and roof, so on. Next, please. As I said, the, the, this was built on the hill. Instead of uh, making that kind of floating platform, because I didn't have a, the budget, what I did is just digging the half of the ground to put this soil uh, up here to make a small platform. However, the hill still continue this way, that's why this has to be generally, usually, the strong concrete retaining wall as cantilever to support the pressure of the earth. But instead of making cantilever concrete wall, I just made this concrete floor curved like this. So this is upside down of arch. So the pressure of the earth is naturally transferred to the floor. So this doesn't need to be strong cantilever wall. This is just a part of the floor. So this is not the wall, this is a part of the floor. And besides that, there's only three thin columns. It, it, each one is only uh, uh, two inch diameter. And uh, especially in Japan where we have a strong earthquake, it's impossible to have a, such a small column. So obviously this, is, uh, it's, uh, obviously this is only supporting the vertical force, not horizontal lateral force. I made the roof as the diaphragm so that the, all the lateral force is transferred to the edge of this floor so that none of the, the, the lateral force come to the, the top of the column, so that it's only supporting the, the vertical force. This is just one space with a kitchen and open bathroom, and, but you can close when the, somebody comes, you can close the bathroom. Or also, this is a movable closet, you can move to divide the bedroom into two just in case somebody wants to stay over. Next, please. Uh, this is a nine square grid house. The, this is a structural containers uh, in order to make uh, one square space, which can be divided into the small nine square using sliding door. Also, you, uh, depending on the, 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 the occasion, you can divide into the linear space or the middle size of the square, whatever you want. There is only two spaces at the name. It's the bathroom and the kitchen. But there is no place called the living room or bedroom. And depending on season, for example, in the winter, you can put your bed south side of the, the house, it's warmer. And the summer, you can put your bed uh, northern side of the house, uh, it's cooler. Uh, in case you fight with your wife, you can separate two bedrooms. 
next please. This photo, it, it's showing that the just one square space, all the storage, and the mechanical space, and the air conditioning, everything in the structural cabinet. Also, you, you can divide bedroom and bathroom depending on the, the, the occasion. Next, please. This is the first phase of the museum project called art, uh, Paper Art Museum. I was asked to, to renovate all the factory into the gallery with very small budget. What I did is just a simple thing. I just removed all the, the existing wall, exposing the steel columns, and I put the standard garage door, uh, fiberglass overhanging door. Usually, overhanging door, when it's open, it comes inside of the space. I just put the other way around, so when it's open, this goes outside in order to create nice canopy, in order to connect to the inside and outside. So just, just standard uh, the carriage door put the other way around. Next, please. Then uh, the next phase was a, a new building. And uh, this, is, uh, this looks like one building, but actually, structure, this is a totally separate building. Northern side, a three-story of the gallery, and the southern side of the administration. It's just two building structures connected with the bridge and the main brain and the, the, the fiberglass shutter. This is standard uh, the glass, uh, uh, double glazed uh, fiberglass uh, shutter. Uh, when museum is open, it goes up and the museum is open. Next, please. And the south side, uh, it's open to create a canopy. Next, please. And the inside, you can open the, the shutter and even you can open the sliding door to connect the south side and the, and the northern side uh, to create the bigger space depending on type of exhibition or uh, the, uh, the lecture, or whatever, uh, depending on occasion. Next, please. This is a small uh, restaurant in Tokyo. And uh, two facades of the restaurant is made of the glass shutter. It's a standard <laughs> shutter. Uh, when me, uh, the gallery, uh, the restaurant is closed, it's uh, totally closed. When the restaurant is open, this uh, 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 glass shutter uh, go up. Next, please. Then it's a in, in a fine day, total, totally the glass shutter goes up on both sides. Totally the two facade is open to connect inside the outside space. Next, please. This is another shutter house for the photographer. And the, this was very narrow, small site, nothing to see outside. So I made a small courtyard in many places. And uh, the, the, the so small uh, the courtyard was, uh, is in between the living and dining, so on. And this is separated with the glass shutter. Next, please. When in fine days, this glass shutter totally open uh, to connect the, the living room with the dining space, with the courtyard in front and the right side so that all the floor are totally connected when uh, it's good day with all the shutter goes up. Next, please. This is another small office building uh, for the, the showroom for the dentist, uh, dental equipment. And the client asked me to, to, to have some idea uh, because there is a dental college in front of this office. They want to invite the doctor and the student to their, their showroom. So I designed the other facade ma made of uh, glass shutter. Next, please. And shutter totally open. Then there's a cafe and uh, overlooking the, the, their showroom so that uh, their student and the professor of dental college can come spend the, the have a lunch free with the cafe and they can see the, the, the dental equipment at the same time. <laughs> Next, please. This is apartment. Uh, and the right-hand side is the, uh, the existing site before the construction. There's many trees. I promise with my client I don't want to cut any trees. However, um, I wanted to have uh, some structural grid in order to make structure uh, steel construction economical. But uh, any of the square or rectangular grid didn't fit into this uh, the site without cutting trees or cutting the roots under the ground. So what I found out is the triangle grid. Triangle grid is very special. For example, if this is, let's say, this is a square grid, there is only four beams is intersecting. At least you need three beams to, to support the column stiffen. However, it's a triangle grid. There is a six beam is intersecting. So 
you can avoid up to three beams, still you have three more to support the, 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 the columns. So I have more freedom to decide where to open, opening, to, where to ha have an opening to avoid the cutting trees and roots, uh, depending on the position of the, uh, the trees. Next, please. This photo, right hand, left hand side, was taken in the winter. Uh, you can see the trees. But in the summer, the leaves cover the roof. So the leaves become shading for the roof. So it's very cool. And this is three story, uh, the triplex, duplex, triplex apartment. And uh, the, 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 these people used to walk through the, the forest to, as a shortcut to the train station. So I designed the kind of the pilotty. Uh, in order to minimize the space on the ground, in order to let the, 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 uh, the neighbor of people to walk through uh, underneath of the building to the train station in order to keep good, good relationship with the, uh, the neighbor of people. Next, please. This is a house called Naked House. This is built in the middle of the rice field. The uh, request of the client was very unique. They said that they want a the house like a warehouse. And they said also said that they don't want to, they don't need to have a very uh, the, uh, the individual room with a tight privacy because they want to share time and space in their common space instead of being being in the individual spaces. So I use uh, the, uh, the 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 contextual material. Uh, there are many greenhouses, so I use the, the corrugated glass fiber uh, the seat uh, horizontally and vertically to reinforce each other and also to keep air gap as an insulation. And also I created the, the insulation material using the, the, uh, the kind of the foam core, uh, 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 the spaghetti shape of the foam core, which is usually used for the packing of the fruits, put in the plastic bag. And I put extra layer with bubble packing material. So there are many layer of ins translucent uh, insulation material to make all insulated. Uh, insulated, but also the translucent. Next, please. So the wall is made of by fabric, so it's uh, it's translucent. And uh, the, the individual rooms are made as a movable box. And two sides of the box are made by a sliding door, which uh, which can be removed. And uh, the even four uh, rooms can be connected in order to create linear uh, tatami mat. Uh, floor. This is perfect for the funeral occasion, and or even that the, you can uh, you can remove next piece. Ah, sorry, the, keep it. Um, also, that it's uh, like uh, the, the grandmother doesn't want to have air conditioning, but small children they love to have air conditioning, and there's a, it's impossible to have the air conditioning inside of the movable box. So here is the the, the air conditioning unit for the common space. Uh, when you want to have air conditioning, you just move your box attached to the wall. <laughs> so this becomes your individual air conditioning unit. But also if you want to see outside, just you move this unit attaching to the window. So that is becoming your personal window. <laughs> Next, please. And you can remove all the, the, the cabinet outside uh, when, in order to, when you want to have a lecture or the kids can study and play on top of their own boxes. Next, please. This is a uh, six-story office building in the middle of the big city like Osaka. And also, it's required the fire protected building. Usually, fire protected building, we have to use a concrete or a steel with fire protection. Then, um, the, the, I, I thought, why not to use timber, wood, as a fire protection, and also the final finish. Because the, the wood doesn't transfer the heat. First of all, we have to tr protect the, the steel uh, from the melting. So that, that, that I, I, I thought this can work. I, this is the testing. I, I tested it, this method, to get the government permission. Uh, as I said, the, the, the first of all, the timber doesn't transfer the heat. But when the heat becomes much higher, fire becomes much higher, temperature becomes higher, that uh, obviously timber can be burned then timber would become charcoal. Charcoal is a fi perfect fire protection material. So that, 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 that I proved this method by testing, and that, that, that I found out uh, one inch thickness of the, the timber after this is prior works as a half hour fire protection. 
and the two inch boxers, one hour fire protection. So that uh, this building is fire protected, still with construction, fire protected with the plywood as a final finish. So you don't have to spray ugly fire protection. Next, please. And also that then you have to cover by uh, plasterboard and final finish. The less uh, material and all the inside is fire finished, fire protected with the, the plywood and also that's the final finish. <coughs> Next, please. And also I'm now developing the, the, uh, the, the, the plywood structure using LVL, LSL, uh, making kind of woven structure. This is a small uh, daycare center in northern Japan with heavy snow. I just bent it, the, this uh, the, the, the LVL thin panel, but still this is, can be bent very easily by wind. So I made a wooden frame and connecting by a steel rod to, in order to create kind of truss structure to, to support, to uh, stiffening each other. Next, please. And the roof is finished with a stainless steel and a polycarbonate in order to invite the light inside. Next, please. Then the same client asked me to design the gymnasium for the, the, the hospital. And because this hospital is a two-story structure, I didn't want to make a heavy uh, building next to the, the two-story building. So I put the, the uh, the main body of the gymnasium underground, only the roof is above the ground. And this is another the further development of the, uh, the uh, pre-bent uh, uh, LBL uh, structure. For the longitudinal section, I put the, uh, the, the uh, arch of the, 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 the LBL to follow this oval shape. So it's diagonal in order to follow the all the section we're following this curvature. Perpendicular to that, the other arch was put uh, vertically, which uh, parallelly, so that all the cut edge is horizontal. Then I put this top layer, top and bottom, there is a space in between, and I put small, uh, 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 small timber in order to create a truss. Next, please. So you, as you see, this uh, prevent uh, uh, every year is following the, the, uh, the, the curvature, and this side is uh, the, the parallel, so that it creates the gap in between two layers, and uh, this creates a truss structure. Next, please. And there is a swimming pool, to then the, the, the we get the indirect light through the gymnasium into the swimming pool. Next, please. Uh, this is uh, my latest project. This is new Pompidou Center in Metz. Uh, Metz is a city uh, east side of, the, of France. Um, this was international competition. This was the first time I won the competition. Um, idea was the uh, because this site is uh, uh, the other side of the train station. It's a uh, it's empty site, and it's a big site. I want to design the, the building uh, as a gathering space. So first I asked uh, my uh, landscape architect to design the park and I put the, the hut, roof, on top of the, the landscape in order to uh, make the, the, uh, the connection between the, the outside uh, garden and uh, which is float into the space. Instead of making a box which, is, uh, which divide inside and outside, so that I just made a big roof and underneath is totally uh, uh, can be connected with us uh, outside. The, the, this is uh, again uh, the glass sliding uh, shutter. So in the fine day, all the shutter goes up. Then inside and uh, outside is connected. And this roof uh, come from uh, uh, next, please. The idea come from the, uh, the woven. Uh, this is Chinese bamboo hut, and uh, the, the, the geometry is hexagon woven pattern. And all the floor plan and the, the shape of the roof is, so, sorry, it's very difficult to see, but the, the roof of the shape is hexagon. And uh, hexagon is the, uh, the, the, actually is a symbol of the France, which is a shape of the, the France, uh, the, the uh, shape of the France. So people, French people uh, consider the hexagon as their symbol. Uh, so this is a facade, which is made uh, by glass shutter, and it's open totally to connect inside and outside. And uh, th uh, there's uh, three tubes, it's a gallery tubes, and the end of the tube is a big window framing the, the monument of the city, although this is a little bit far uh, 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 away from the center of the city, 
but each window is framing important monument of the city. This is framing the cathedral. Second tube is framing the main train station, which was built by German when Metz was occupied by Germany. Uh, next, please. One more. Yes. This is my uh, temporary office in Paris. Uh, as you know, this is uh, on top of Pompidou Center. This is six floor terrace. I asked the, the president as a joke, if they then lend me the, 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 the terrace, I can build my own temporary uh, the office. Uh, the president said, if you get the permission from Renzo Piano, that I can build it. So I went to his <laughs> office to get his permission. And he said, that's a great idea. So I, I was very lucky to get his permission. And uh, the shape is the kind of the tunnel arch, like this glass tube. And uh, next, please. Because I don't have money, I just brought my Japanese student to work with a French student uh, to organize a workshop to build all the structure by student last summer. <laughs> so it's, uh, it's uh, but the, 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 the uh, so, but after I complete the museum, I have to, the, uh, the museum asked me to leave the space they want to use as a gallery. So if you come to Paris, uh, you are welcome to visit me, but the, uh, I'm sorry, you have to buy a ticket uh, to see me. <laughs> uh, yeah, reality, really, because I became the, the, pump, uh, uh, the, uh, the uh, part of the exhibition, so you have to buy a ticket to see me. <laughs> Next, please. This is a paper tube structure, very early period, 1980. It's a temporary structure for three months. But this time, I didn't have a perm permission to use the paper tube as a structural element. So there is a square steel column to support the roof. So paper tube was just used as a the secondary material to, to, as a wall as receiving the wind pressure. And there is 330 tube. Uh, the diameter is the uh, inch and uh, one foot one foot and uh, uh, ten inch, uh, inch diameter. And uh, next, please. And uh, the in between space was the, the, the closed by the, uh, the uh, uh, clear plastic invite to, in order to invite light. And there is the bigger diameter tube that is a four foot diameter. And the inside is used as a toilet. Because of the ceiling height is 8 meters, that is about 27 feet, you get very good sound effect. <laughs> and, uh, also, uh, in case you, you finish with your toilet paper, you can tear off inside the wall. <laughs> Next, please. This is a, a, the small library for the, my friend Poet. This was built in 1991 as a first permanent paper chip structure without government permission. I built it without permission. And it's still there, it's good condition. This structure, the diameter is only four inch, and this post-tension structure, this is the, the, the steel rod is inside the tube to put post-tension to connect the timber wood joint and the, the paper chip for the columns and the beams. Next, please. And this is the first permanent paper tube uh, building with government permission. I designed my own weekend house in order to get this complicated government permission, and I got it. It was after one year, but I didn't manage to build to realize my weekend house. I was very lucky to get this small commission from a fashion designer Issey Miyake to use this permission for his uh, small gallery as a first permanent paper chip, uh, paper chip structure. Next, please. It's just simple structure with columns, which create a beautiful shadow, and it's moved depending on time of the day, and also space in between the paper tube to invite nice linear light behind the wall. Next, please. And uh, recently, I, uh, I was able to build my own weekend house, but it was too late. I have no more weekend, because I'm all the time. <laughs> <laughs> next, next, please. And this is the first paper art, 1998. Uh, each time I design the paper tube structure, this is totally different from previous structure. I have to test it, and I have to get the government permi special permission to, to, to build it. So this is just simple arch with a wooden joint connected with the lug board 
next piece. This is a construction photo of the Japanese Pavilion for Hanover Expo uh, in Germany, year 2000. Uh, the, the theme of Expo was the environmental issue. So I was uh, uh, chosen by government to, to build uh, a building out of recycled material. But also, I want to design the building. Uh, 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 usually, the uh, problem of Expo Pavilion is in industrial uh, we create industrial waste because we make many temporary pavilions and it's dismantled after half year, and so we create a lot of waste. So I want to design the building out of recycled material, but also I want to recycle or use the, the material after I demolish the building. So the, my goal was not the completion of the building. My goal was when building was demolished. Uh, I didn't want the concrete foundation, so all the foundation is made of a uh, wooden box filled with sand instead of the concrete foundation because concrete is very difficult material to recycle. And I was very lucky uh, to get the, the, the consultant. Uh, uh, I worked with a pro a Professor Fry Otto in order to develop this paper chip grid shell structure. And uh, for the construction, this is a long tube. It's uh, 20 meter. That is about uh, uh, seven, seven feet. That is the maximum length we can carry uh, using the high uh, outbound. Then we put flat. Uh, the connect connection is just fabric tape. And we push up uh, by scaffolding. And little by little, uh, we rotate the scaffolding to, to uh, shape the, the, uh, the, the grid shell. And so this is very low tech. We didn't use a heavy uh, the, the crane. And, but the only why one high tech method was used is we put 10 antenna to measure change of the shape from satellite using the GPS uh, system to measure the, the, the change of the shape. Next, please. And uh, uh, this is uh, the, the foundation with a sand box, a box of wooden box with sand. And this is uh, the paper membrane. Uh, this is fire protected and waterproof according to the German regulation. Next, please. And uh, the, because it's a paper, it's uh, become a kind of the, the, uh, the Isam Noguchi type of uh, the light fixture in the evening. Next, please. Uh, this is the inside. And uh, the, this is the fabric the tape. As I said, the, the during the election, the, the paper chip changed the angle and it's stiffening by itself, and also it's allow uh, the paper to rotate three-dimensionally during the election. So this simple fabric tape allows such a complicated movement of the paper chip during the election process. Next, please. please. Uh, this is the fabric tape. And uh, I had to actually, that, that, uh, I must say, I had to make many compromises. Uh, although we proved everything by testing and calculation according to German regulation. But the, uh, the, this wooden arch, it used to be very thin arch in order to just triangulate paper chip grid shell. That's the idea, wonderful idea of Fly Auto. But the, the, the authority asked us uh, uh, to make the dimension of the timber four times bigger than it's necessary. So I must say this is no longer pure paper chip structure. This is a hybrid structure with paper chip and wooden arch. Now that was a big uh, compromise I had to make. But the, the, the space, quality of space itself was really what I expected. And this is the end wall. This is also made of paper honeycomb. Next, please. In order to use paper honeycomb for the structure, I previously designed a small museum in Japan to get special government permission by testing using the paper honeycomb as a roof structure. Next, please. This is an arch in MoMA, year 2000. Before MoMA uh, started co uh, reconstruction, uh, I was asked to cover the, the, the garden. Uh, so I covered the, the, the garden by paper tube structure. And uh, I was very lucky uh, because I didn't have to compromise at all. This is purely paper tube structure. Uh, I could realize because I didn't have to work with a mean authority in New York. <laughs> Next, please. This is Rwanda, 1994. They have a terrible fight between Tsuchi and uh, Futsu. Uh, and over two million people became refugees. And uh, I was really shocked to see a photo right hand side because people are freezing with blanket. 
I thought most of African countries warm, but they have very heavy rainy season. And also they only provided the very, very poor plastic sheet from the United Nations. That's why they are freezing during the rainy season. So I thought we have to improve the shelter, otherwise any medical care doesn't help them. Next please. So I went to the, the head office of the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees in Geneva to propose my idea uh, improving shelter uh, out of paper tube. I was very lucky to be hired as, as, as consultant because they are having uh, the, the, the environment problem and uh, they thought that my proposal can uh, uh, help this problem. This is a typical uh, refugee shelter. This is uh, the UN plastic sheet and the refugee have to cut the trees by themselves to make a frame put, to put the plastic sheet. And over two million people can cut uh, trees. So this become the, 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 this used to be the forest, but it's all the trees gone. And the refugee have to cut much, have to go much further to cut more trees. And uh, after this become very serious deforestation, uh, the United Nations provide them aluminum pipe. But aluminum is very expensive material in Africa. That's why refugees sold them out for money and they cut the trees again. That's why the, the aluminum pipe didn't work as an alternative material, so that the, the, they hired me to develop my idea with using paper chip as an alternative material. Next, please. And I was very lucky to get the, the support from one of the most famous European furniture company, Vitra. As you know, Vitra uh, hired many famous architects. This is the furniture museum and the factory designed by Frank Gehry. Behind this factory, there is a seminar house designed by Tadawando. Right hand side of this factory, there is a factory designed by Nicolas Grimichaud and uh, Alvaro Cesar. Further right, there is a fire station designed by Zaha Hadid. So this company has a such uh, uh, expensive collection of the architecture, and my tent is their, che their cheapest collection. <laughs> uh, left hand side, this is a Bimba camp in Rwanda. Nowadays, already Rwanda refugees came back to home, and they are accepting uh, refugees from Congo. And I went to there, uh, next please, to, to make the 50 unit of tent as a monitoring stage. It's still testing stage, because uh, I have to teach them how to assemble them. Uh, it's, I have to see whether this system is easy enough to be assembled by themselves. And also, we have to check the durability. And also, biggest problem is termite. So this is still monitoring stage. Next, please. This is a Kobe in Japan, 1995, after the earthquake. Over 6,500 people were killed. And this town was all burned fire after the earthquake. And uh, I went to there. Uh, I particularly went to a Catholic church. The, all the building is gone. I knew there's many Vietnamese refugees in this church. I thought that those kind of minority people were having a harder time after disaster. Then uh, I proposed to the priest to rebuild the church out of paper, but the, 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 they accepted, he accepted if I can build uh, my own money and with all voluntary people. So I started to do the fundraising as well as the designing the, 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 the church. Next, please. Then in the meantime, I, 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 I got known uh, more about the problem of Vietnamese refugees in, in Kobe. <coughs> They are living in the park like this in the plastic sheet. And the rainy days, all the floor get wet and in shiny day, inside it get so hot, they cannot stay inside. Also, the neighbor people try to kick them out because they are afraid this park is becoming like a slum. But the, 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 they couldn't move into the government house because the, all the government house was built outside of the city. And these people had the only job in particular area of the city working in the particular factory. So if they move out from the city, they're going to lose their job. That's why they had to keep living in this park. So I thought I have, if I design the, the nicer uh, the, the, the temporary shelter, they can be accepted by neighbor to keep living here. So I start building the, the, the house using paper tube uh, for the inch diameter. And uh, the, uh, the foundation is made of plastic beer container. Uh, in Japan, there are the two major beer companies called Kirin and Asahi. I particularly asked ask the Kirin company to donate 
plastic beer container because the other company makes a plastic beer container red, which doesn't go with the color of the paper too. <laughs> next, next, please. We, I built all the, with the student during the summer, uh, about 30 units for the, the Vietnamese refugees. Um, the, uh, this is the interior. Next, please. And this is in Turkey, 1999. Also, they have a terrible earthquake. First, I went to there with uh, the, I brought plastic sheet because always plastic sheet was useful to use. This government, this is the the military tent. The, this is too old and they are not no longer waterproof. So that's why plastic sheet was used usefully used to cover them. And I asked the, because that time in Japan we had been had the, the so-called bubble period is gone. Bubble period is gone, so that it was very difficult to money donate it. So what I did was asking the uh, uh, Japanese contractor to donate their plastic sheet with their company name and logo. And uh, it's very important to have uh, their name printed because if CNN or some newspaper comes and their name of the company it could be uh, seen in all over the world. And even the, the donation, donating money is uh, very important, but you don't know how your money is used during a disaster. But even if you just donate poor plastic sheet, and if you see your company name on the newspaper or TV, you must be very happy, then you continue supporting us. That's why this kind of public relation is very important during disaster time. Then I was asked by local uh, NGO to build the Kobe type of the, the, uh, the shelter, temporary shelter, because they are having very cold winter with snow. Next, please. And then I work with local uh, architect to uh, it's one go, go back uh, to to adapt Kobe type into the context of the the, the Turkey, and uh, it has to be insulated. So this is my favorite photo. Children helped us to put waste paper inside of the paper tube to make wall more insulated, and all the paper tube and the plastic beer container was donated free from local manufacturer. Next, please. And this is uh, India, 2001. And uh, I was asked to come over to build temporary houses. And it was very easy to find the paper tube locally because there are many textile, in the textile company make their own paper tube to, to put carpet fabric. And, but I couldn't find the plastic beer container because nobody drink beer uh, there. <laughs> and uh, my local architect uh, suggested me to use a Coca-Cola plastic case, but I thought that is out of context. So I just <laughs> used the... Uh, 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 the, 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 the rubber, uh, I made uh, the mud floor, and uh, traditional mud floor, and this is uh, the woven cane mud, two layers with a very thin plastic, next piece, as a, as a roof, so it's uh, kind of translucent. And some of them are used as a school, and some of them are used as a house, so this is a traditional mud floor. Next piece. And this is a small paper house inside of the gymna uh, gymnasium. This was last end of last year, northern Japan co city called Niigata got the terrible earthquake, and the, 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 all the village people were evacuated in the gymnasium. And the, 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 it's the same as the, after the, the hurricane, they evacuated, but there are no privacy, and they are mentally tired. And also that the, the, the gymnasium is, ceiling height is so high, so it's very difficult to, to heat up. So I built with my student the pa small paper house uh, with a paper honeycomb in order to keep privacy and keep them warm. Next, please. Next, please. And this is my latest uh, uh, project in Sri Lanka after tsunami. I was asked to come over to rebuild the, the, the small fisherman's village, Islamic fisherman's village. Uh, so I'm rebuilding the 80 houses this is earth brick, but I limited the, the, the area to make uh, by the brick in order to uh, use the, the local labor. This brick is made of, of the earth, but its shape is like a logo block. We can stack very easily by local labor. And these furniture are prefabricated in the factory, uh, made of the rubber trees. Uh, because in, 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 in uh, Sri Lanka, they have big in, uh, tile industries. They make the, the rubber trees after they take the rubber, they cut, and the, the, they are usually used for the something like uh, the, 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 the craft, like uh, some craft, uh, some craft.
So I made this uh, furniture all made of very inexpensive rubber timber. So the, because the, the, the people lost, not only lost their house, but also they lost their furniture. So even if they move into new house, they don't have any storage. So all the walls, doors, the, the partition is made of the, uh, the closet, uh, uh, so that they can have all the, the necessary storage uh, already built in. Next, please. This is the last project. This is a church in Kobe, 1995. Everything was made by student. And uh, we spent uh, five weeks to complete this church. Next, please. This is the last picture. Um, so this is the first time they are having morning service inside, uh, underneath of the, the, the roof. And here's the, uh, the priest. And the priest told me they don't want, he doesn't want to have any symbol or any icon of a Catholic church because he wanted to use this space as a community, community space, invite the people uh, not depending on the religion. Uh, but I wanted to the, the, the show one of the, my, some of my experience visiting the wonderful uh, church all over the world. So only thing what I did is uh, putting the, 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 the paper chip of the oval shape. This comes from one of my favorite church in Rome, designed by Bernini, in order to create the corridor space with the main space. Uh, and uh, this church was there until four months ago. And the church decided to rebuild all the buildings. And this church was donated to Taiwan because they also had a terrible earthquake. And now this is under process of rebuilding in Taiwan. And as I said at the beginning, the, uh, we have been working for privileged people and we love to make a monument. I'm not saying I'm an exception. But I was very happy that when I built this church, this church was meant to be temporary, but it actually this became permanent because this became the symbol of the city. People loved it. So that I like to keep uh, building the monument for the people. Thank you very much. I think it can be permanent material. Do you know how long the concrete lasts? Even the concrete building can be easily destroyed by earthquake. But the paper tube building cannot be destroyed because it's uh, such a light weight. So the, the, the lifespan of the building has nothing to do with the strength of the material. Even concrete building can be destroyed by earthquake. Also, if it was built by the, the developer, they sold them out and they rebuilt. So this can be temporary. But the, if you love the, the building, even paper building can be last forever. Excuse me. Uh, uh, yes. Pardon me? Mold? Ah, no. Uh, you don't need a mold. This is a sonotube. You know that this is a... Huh? Mold? It's like a son it's a so it's a have you seen sono tube? Yeah. Sono tube is a, the concrete form when you make a concrete form, concrete column, uh, a round column. So you put wet concrete, so it has to be waterproof inside outside. So this is standard tube uh, made by Sonoko. Okay. And it's available everywhere in the world. Thank you. Yes? Thank you. 
other architects and I'm not following your example. And, you know, I mean, trying to go to the museum and you're also designing houses. Why not other architects? But then you have to ask other architect. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, there are so many people uh, uh, sending me email to help, so whenever I go, I always